Okay, here is one of the best card effects ever that requires zero setup, okay? So you begin with a shuffle deck of cards. In fact, it actually doesn't have to be a complete deck. And then all you do is you cut off about one third of the deck, about one third. And then those cards can be mixed as much as the spectator would like. When they're happy with the mixing, they remember the bottom card, which I believe is the Ten of Hearts. That's the card for them to remember. Now they're free to name any card in the deck, and we're simply going to spell out that card three times. He goes with Two of Clubs. So here we go. T, W, O, O, F, C, L, U, B, S. Drop the rest on top. That's the first spelling. So we'll spell two of clubs a second time. T W O O F C L U B S. And now we'll spell it for a third and final time. Two of clubs. T W O O F C L U B S. And believe it or not, the spectator's card somehow has risen to the top. And he is so amazed by this performance that he throws the cards behind him in surprise, like, what is going on with this routine? And then he freely admits, I have no idea why this works. And so that's what we're going to look at today. Why does it work? And who is the one that discovered the principle behind this amazing card routine? Okay, before we look at why this effect works and how you could use it in other situations, as well as who is the person who came up with the original idea driving this effect, I thought I would show you a variation that has more of a narrative to it that spectators just seem to love. So I call this the Your Card is The Routine. Okay, so we're going to be using the cards as a lie detector. Now for this, you can start with a shuffled deck of cards, just like Matt had there. So you mix the cards as much as you like. And in a similar way, you need about a third of the deck. So you just cut off about a third of the deck for this. Technically, between 15 and 23 cards will work just fine. And so what you do here is it begins in a similar way. You show the spectator the identity of the bottom card. Now, as the performer, I wouldn't see this normally, right? So the spectator's card is the Ten of Spades. And then you just turn the packet down. And then you tell the spectator, we're going to use this small packet of cards that I just randomly pulled off the top as a lie detector, okay? And so I'm going to ask you in a minute, what is the identity of the card that you saw? And then the cards are going to reveal whether or not you're truthful in your answer, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do for this lie detection procedure is go ahead and just spell out your card is the, okay? So Y-O-U-R-C-A-R-D-I-S-T-H-E. Your card is the... And then you turn to the spectator and you ask them, what was the card that you saw? With the proviso that they may lie if they like. But regardless of what they say, the cards will reveal the truth. Okay, so you turn to them and say, what's the card you saw? And they may say, king of diamonds or something. They may, most spectators will lie for some reason. So king of diamonds, are you sure? Okay, so we're going to spell the name of your claim card there, King of Diamonds, K-I-N-G-O-F-D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S, King of Diamonds. Okay, well, let's discover the truth. I'm going to spell out your card is the, and we'll see what the cards tell us about your answer. Okay. Y-O-U-R, your C-A-R-D card, I-S is T-H-E. I am sorry, but you have been caught in a lie. Your card was not 
the king of diamonds. It was in fact the ten of spades and the cards detected that perfectly. Okay, so this is also a routine that is guaranteed to work for you if you take off roughly a third of the deck, anywhere between 15 and 23 cards, doing what I did here is guaranteed to work as a lie detection routine. Okay, and also I want to point out in the description below, I will link a one-page write-up of this with all of the steps and explanations so that you can have that as a physical copy, I guess, to refer to and practice from. Okay, so look in the description below for that. It will be a PDF that you can download. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on and who discovered this amazing property. Okay, the author of this bottom-to-top principle, Colum McKay, and he's written this must-read wonderfully written book on mathematical card magic. 52 new effects. This is just an amazing masterpiece in the field of mathematical card magic. It truly is. Colum calls this the bottom to top principle. Okay. Now, once you understand the principle, you'll know how to use it in different situations, like different packet sizes. Okay. So here's the principle. The original bottom card of a packet of end cards, which in the case of both of these presentations was about 15 to 20, ends up on top after three dealings of K cards and dropping the remaining N minus K cards on top, provided that K, so the number of cards that you're like spelling out, is larger than or equal to the packet size divided by two. Okay, so that may sound complicated, but I'm going to apply it to the routine that we saw at the beginning. Okay, so it's not as scary as you might think. Okay, so the question is, what size packet do you need to bring the bottom card to the top when spelling any of the 52 card names? Okay, so the first thing we need to realize is card names have between... 10 and 15 letters in them, okay? So the shortest name, like Ace of Clubs or Six of Clubs, any of the three letter card names together with the clubs, that's the shortest you can get for the card names. There's 10 letters in them, okay? Um, the longest of the card names is 15. So something like Queen of Diamonds or Seven of Diamonds, okay? So the K referred to up here needs to be a number between 10 and 15. So we're trying to find a packet size for which if you have somewhere between 10 and 15 cards, this bottom to top principle will work for you. It will bring that bottom card to the top after spelling out that card name three times. Okay, so the packet size N has to satisfy this inequality right there. Okay, so let's just take a look at that. So first off, something to be aware of is because some card names have 15 letters, we don't want fewer than 15 cards in the packet that we cut off because otherwise we'll run out of cards when spelling that card name if we don't have at least 15 cards. And that will cause issues because that takes you into the realm of what's called hypercodings. So this principle is assuming that you don't go over, that you cannot deal out more cards than you have in the packet. And our packet size needs to be at least 15 because of these larger card names, okay? So the minimum's right there, okay? Now the tricky one is figuring out what is the maximum number of cards that we can use and be guaranteed that the bottom card rises to the top. Well, we just use this inequality, and now he proves this to be the case mathematically in his book on the left-hand side of the screen there, okay? So the reason that 20 is the maximum, it's for the fact that we need all the values between 10 and 15 satisfying this inequality, okay? And the number that's going to potentially get us into trouble is the 10 here, the lower value in this range. Okay, so that means that we need 10 to be larger than or equal to 
n over 2. Well, another way to rewrite that, and I just realized it's kind of going off the screen, is the fact that we would need 20 would have to be bigger than or equal to n, or said differently, n will have to be less than or equal to 20. So that gives us our range here. So the packet can have as few as 15 cards, and you're still safe, up to 20 cards, and you'll be safe, okay? So that's how many cards you'll need for the original performance that I started with. And if a person shoots for about a third of the deck, most likely they're going to hit this range of 15 to 20 cards. Now the effect that I showed you with the your card is the uses a principle in this same book. And for the conditions there, I'll point you to the text itself, okay? Because it gets a bit more involved. But I have already revealed that between 15 and 23 cards is guaranteed to make my lie detector routine work perfectly. Okay, so I appreciate you watching and take a look at the links in the description below. In fact, I have an entire playlist that uses this principle. And on my channel, I call this principle the third times a charm principle. That's why you'll see that name, third time's a charm, because we're doing something three times that brings about something, quote, magical. Whereas Colum originally called the principle low down triple dealing, which is a fun name as well. Okay, well, thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.